Hey, let's check out some satellite imagery here because we've got some nice breaks in the clouds. Uh, infrared imagery shown where you're seeing uh, that uh, very dark color. It's an indication of very little cloud cover. So sunshine breaking through and of course that purplish color related to some uh, showers that are still hanging on out east. So welcome change here. Past couple of hours, the thicker cloud deck tracking east. You go back to the west, there are some uh, showers and storms blossoming as you get back over Kansas where they've had a go of it. And you go way down into the eastern Pacific, and look at that, that swirl that you see. Bud, we hardly knew you. It's all the way down to a tropical storm, rapidly weakening, 65 mile per hour sustained winds. This storm is interesting because it's still on a track, even though it's continuing to weaken, the remnants of it going up through Baja, California, and eventually, potentially, arcing over into the desert southwest, where it could be a big uh, rainmaker for them, the remnant low in that tropical moisture streaming in out uh, of the southwestern U.S. We, of course, have had our own issues with moisture the last three days running. There are the showers I was just talking about still coming down, the rain at least in West Liberty, and also some spotty showers as you track down south. You can see it down around Hazard. So we've got this activity that's going to continue to track east and out of here, and then we'll wait for the next wave that'll come in from the northwest. But if you look at the three-day rainfall totals, 72-hour rainfall totals, we're showing about a two to over four-inch radar estimated rainfall bullseye down around Danville. Uh, parts of Lincoln County and uh, further northwest. And if you look, top end of the Kentucky Mesonet, ground confirmation, they've had over four inches of rain in Lincoln County measured. Uh, so, yeah, pretty soggy stuff. Also, for the third day running, we are under a marginal risk for severe storms today. I don't think it's going to amount to a lot, but we may end up with a few storms on the strong side, the borderline severe later on this evening as this cold front tracks in. There are the departing showers. As I showed you, the future track also developing a line, a broken line of showers and storms later this evening and then fizzling into early tomorrow morning as your front track south. Now, the good news is, watch the dew point. It's muggy today. And that front will also cut humidity. So tomorrow we're feeling pretty good. The humidity is suppressed. Into the weekend, it's going to start to rise again. So look what happens by Saturday. That dew point back in the 60s and 70s. And by Sunday, we're well into the yuck factor on the uh, muggy meter there. We could have Sunday dew points in the mid-70s. When you combine that with highs in the low 90s, we may be in the upper 90s near triple-digit heat indices by the end of the weekend. That's some steamy, oppressive stuff tracking our way. So you want a summery weekend, you got one coming. All that, the heat and humidity rising through the weekend. Today, mid-80s, scattered showers and storms redeveloping, but it probably won't be until late today in this evening. And then... Diminishing overnight as our cold front tracks south, and then we get into a nice run of days. Good. Four, maybe five day stretch without any precipitation. But of course, uh, that's dominated by high pressure, and what will end up happening is the heat, the humidity both rising. So a pretty sticky weekend on the way. Our next good chance for showers and thunderstorms. We're going to try to push off toward the middle of next week. Sounds good, Tom. All right, another promising Alzheimer's treatment fails clinical tests, and about half of millennials think they'll be millionaires someday. Jane King has these stories and so much more. It's today's Business Report. Eli Lilly and AstraZeneca dropped two late-stage trials of an experimental Alzheimer's drug they were co-developing. The company said the treatment wasn't working as well as they had hoped, and that ending the trials was not a result of any safety concerns. Now, an AstraZeneca spokesperson said the two will continue to jointly pursue an early-stage trial of another experimental Alzheimer's drug, and Lilly has other Alzheimer's treatments in trials as well. Well, Apple telling developers to stop making apps that share data on users' friends. It closed a loophole that allowed some app makers to store and share data without many people's permission. The move cracks down on something that's been done for years, where app makers use people's contacts for marketing. Millennials have great financial expectations. About half of young people between 21 and 37 anticipate being millionaires someday. That's despite having a collective and crippling $1 trillion in student debt, credit card, and other debt hanging over their heads. This is according to a new report from the brokerage firm TD Ameritrade. Well, Disney World will let you go glamping inside its Pandora theme park for one night. This is a contest. Only two people will be chosen to do the glamping. The lucky duo will get to sleep in a tent on the glowing bioluminescent park grounds and wake up to the sunrise over Pandora's floating mountains. All you need to do is visit the DCAMP website and share a video explaining why you should be picked. From the NASDAQ, I'm Jane King with your business update. Jane King, thanks so much. Let's take a look and see how stocks are performing at this noon hour. Dow Jones Industrial is up about two points, sitting right now at 25,000. 322. NASDAQ Composite also up 33 points to sit right now at 77.36.
It looks like a friend is calling you, but it just might actually be a phone scam. According to True Caller, more than $9 billion was lost due to phone scams in 2017. That's up from $7.4 billion in 2015. And more than 7 million complaints were filed with the National Do Not Call Registry last year, according to the Federal Trade Commission. Experts say scammers are increasingly spoofing phone numbers to make them look familiar to consumers on the other end. All the pain at the pump continues. Consumers are actually spending $69 more a month to fill up their vehicles as compared to last summer. It's according to a new report from AAA. With strong demand as the summer travel season gets underway, AAA says there's little relief in sight. Experts say motorists can expect to spend at least $250 more on gas this summer, with prices ranging between $2.85 and $3.05. That's through Labor Day. We've all heard the tale, why did the chicken cross the road? But what about why did the cow cross the road? Going to explain why it caused one family a huge headache in News of the Weird. That's next.